You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey, this is Mitch from Moon Fever, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Mitch McCooley of Moon Fever, and they have released their new single entitled Getting Loud. And they also have some official news coming up that we're going to talk about today that actually just went live today, which is pretty cool. And we're just going to get that out of the way here, Mitch. They're going to be going on tour with, I'll let Mitch take it away. Steel Panther, very, very, very excited about it. You can't get no better, well, other than Metallica or Danzig or Ghost or somebody like that. I mean, still. Also a fan of them, too. <laughs> hey, Steel Panther, great, great show. Great show. So, so congratulations on that, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. So how you doing? Good. You know, just uh, doing some interviews. Uh, Going to go uh, write some songs with my bass player later tonight. That's about it, you know. Have a, have a song on the radio is kind of one of the coolest things I've ever had in my entire life. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's pretty, life's pretty good. I'm definitely not complaining right now, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just take it as day by day and just, hey, if that's what it is, that's what it is. That's what I always say because you can't change it. So, no, you cannot. You cannot. So, at 17 years old, you traded your hometown of Green Bay, Wisconsin for Los Angeles, California. However, yes, you then moved out to Seattle in 2020. So you then linked up with Troy and Dave of this band. Correct. Looking, looking back on this, Mitch, mm-hmm. how crucial was this? And do you think you would found your way into music if not for them? And the, if that's all this experience. I would I'll say that Seattle has probably been the best thing for my life that I've ever had ever. You know, I know people kind of say that people kind of come across as cold and shitty out here and stuff, um, and they're not. Like, it's like the most welcoming people I've ever met. The city is very inspiring. It's It can get very dark, but um, it's good for the music, you know? Sure. You know, it's kind of a part of the process. And um, But, yeah, I, I think I would have always done music. I, I love doing music. You know, even though I was 17, it's always been my dream. But I'm very happy that I get to do it with, my boys i love dave and troy and tristan to death so it's uh, but you know seattle's always going to have that image of the gloomy yeah. gloomy out there and plus ties to sound garden yep. Nirvana, yeah. stuff right. like that and the things that they sung about mm-hmm. and you're gonna get that with anywhere you go i mean yeah that's also true that's also true yeah so, but yeah it's, I, it's interesting like it it definitely has changed my, how, like my music though like i so when i was in la it was more like I don't know, more of like positive sounding. And yeah. now Seattle, it's like, this is a dark rock band, but sick. You know what I mean? That's what it's supposed to be, you know? So do you lock this growth in your music? Do you think yes. that you have found yourself as a musician? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely do, man. And I think, you know, we're always constantly growing and developing and, you know, keeping yourself interested, I guess, in what you're doing. But I, I think... Right now, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of, of, of my sound and the band sound, you know? Yeah, very happy. How excited are you guys to have this single, new single, Getting Loud, out now? I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, it's incredible, dude. Like, I've been dreaming about this since I was a teenager, being like, I want to be a rock star, you know? <laughs> like, little stupid Mitch with his, like, Jake Terser guitar, being like, I'm going to do it someday. And now I'm, like, actually doing it, and it's... Uh, it's an incredible thing, man. It's I'm very proud of it, you know. So, are you like little sweet Chuck in Police Academy, riding his little scooter, his little flag on the back? Yeah, let me know. I'm going to go to the police academy. Yeah. Let me know. Exactly. I'm going to be a rock star, motherfucker. Yeah, let me know. I'll kick your ass. Yep. Yeah. That's, that was basically me being like, I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going 
Screw you, Dad. Not really, but you know. But now, but, hey, but now look at it this way: you got all these people coming back, going, "Hey, man, can you hook a bro up with some ticket?" No. Yeah, no. Yeah, not anymore. No. I mean, no. no. I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, it's been cool. Like, we played Epic Center in Green Bay. Um, when I was back home, like I, you know, I ran into some high school friends that I haven't seen literally in, I mean, twelve years or something. Yeah. And it was cool just seeing them, like seeing, because like they always knew I wanted to do this, so they're seeing like me. It actually happened, and it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. How cool is it though for you to see this come back full circle and be surreal now? Yeah, um, it's it's heavy. It's it's very cool. It's, but I think you know, it's it's been a lot of hard work and hard touring, and you know pitfalls basically you just fall from viper pit to viper pit kind of in the music business but you know it's worth it you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh yeah it's it's not an easy road and i hope everybody understands that you know these these guys and gals pay their dues trust me <laughs> yeah <laughs> they certainly do my man <laughs> i remember when i was in um when i was like in my first band howling bones which was like it wasn't a bad band but like we just we were very good and we we're like young and um, I remember us touring like up the West Coast in a Mazda hatchback with our yeah. gear. Like, there you go. and I, now I'm like, how did I do that? Like, I remember <laughs> being in a leaky uh, white GMC Savannah, and all the, we put all the gear in the van, and we did a, a national tour in it, and it was just like leaking all over the place, like oh, slept in the van, like to, it was gnarly. But you know. Sometimes that's what you got to do, man. So that's how you get there, you know? Oh, you got like four plus sweaty dudes who stink. And I mean, it's like, and, and tr folks, trust me, when I say this, a bitch can vouch for me on this when I say this. Uh -huh. There's days when all you got is wipes to take a shower with. That's it. Uh, yeah, most certainly. there is. That is it. You got the same clothes on until you can luckily find a laundry place. Yeah, yeah, those laundry places come in handy. But yeah, uh, oh yeah, that van after a week or so. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, um, Look, we're never driving uh, that again. <laughs> yeah, it's unpleasant. And like, you know, it's so funny. Like, uh, me and the guys don't love each other, but it's like usually like on that last stretch of drive home from where we are back to Seattle, everyone just like get me away from you guys i need i can't have all this male energy more like everyone needs to go back and see their girlfriends like bad you know <laughs> the video for getting loud was directed by jim Laveau. how was working with jim and did he get exactly what you were looking for in this um, it, it was a really, really cool experience, really easy to work with. He has the, one of the coolest pinball machines in his studio called the Dark Knight that plays like metal music. It's super sick, but it was really interesting because we shot it in Phoenix and we actually shot the video while there was a crazy dust storm happening. So you couldn't even like go outside. It was just like sand. It was wild. And, wow. um, you know, it's cool. It's like, so he has this like these screen like this like screens and like you just like perform in front of them. they like project all this stuff it's it was a really creative process it was very cool and i remember us drinking a lot of white claws so that was also pretty fun <laughs> i remember us like every day just kind of like drinking and then like basically just like performing the song over and over again in front of the screen it was pretty fun how good does it feel to see getting loud on top 40 at active rock man i mean it to see what you guys have been through and now we got this going on. I mean, that's gotta be added, added fuel to your fire. Well, it's insane. Like when we, um, we were on tour actually when, uh, Don called us and he's like, I got a message from him. I was like, Hey, you need to call me. And usually for our management, when I see that, I'm like, Oh my God, what did we do? Like, <laughs> I am definitely going to get yelled at right now. And, um, yeah, he calls, he's like, Hey guys, he's like, uh, you got, you're, you're in the top 40. You guys happen. And everyone's just like, what? like yelling in the hotel room it was pretty sick cool moment you guys are releasing singles at this time does it make sense to only release singles at this time before releasing an ep or a full length i i think so um you know i'm like moon fever is working its way but you know we're not really that big of a band where you know it really financially makes the most sense to where, you know, we can actually like at least break even on it. You know what I mean? Cause I mean, recording records is a whole ton of money and you know, it's a huge commitment. 
And if people are only going to like want to hear the single or like two songs off, it's like, man, I don't know if that's the move yet. Eventually, um, you know, of course I want to do a full length and I want to, you know, I want to do vinyl and have my opus of an album, you know, of course. Well, like have my moment from that <laughs> uh, Walking Hard movie, you know, the guy's like in with like all the strings and the oboes. <laughs> I got to say this though, man, you know, for a band, upcoming band, I do not have a problem putting out a, an EP because you definitely want something out there to, to give somebody a taste yeah. of your music. But, you know, I've seen some bands who've been around 15, 20 years and they put out an EP and, and they, you know, to me, it's like, just put out a full length because six months later, they're going to do it. They're going to put out a full length. I don't understand that. I, I think what it is, is it's kind of like where the label or the management or whatever, they kind of try to use the EP as like almost like promotion for the album like a bridge yeah. kind of like a bridge yeah it's like it's like here's the single okay here's a little bit more and then here's the whole thing and i think that's kind of what the strategy has always been in music even though i think nowadays it's, it is kind of mm -hmm. more of a singles market than it is oh yeah album, you know um it seems that's kind of what the trend is right now um but i mean i definitely want to put an album out eventually definitely and I, it's gonna be yeah so how's the fans of Moon Fever's feedback been on the release of this new single plus the other singles you have out right now? What are you seeing, man, that, that fuels that fire still? Uh, I'm going to tell you, man, um, it, it, it's great. Um, it's, it's something I've never had in any of my other bands or projects. It, the response has been amazing, um, and the, I, the fans are incredible. You know, like, you know, some of these shows you go to and I'm like, you know, you do a good show for them and you see what their reaction is. And I'm like, this is like why we do it. You know what I mean? To make them happy and like you know, lose control. Like I remember we did one show in El Corazon up here and I saw like, it was like an all ages show or something. And I was seeing like young, like kids, like, like late teenagers, like moshing to it. I'm like, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like so sick. So it's pretty cool. So these singles that's out right now, I know you got a several of them. Yep. Are, are these all going to be on the album or yeah. scratch for new stuff? I, I would definitely say so. Um, and we actually do have quite a few other songs recorded that aren't out yet. We, we I mean, I'll be like right now we could put an album out. We have like mm -hmm. the material, but um, you know, um, I don't know. You know, the thing is, it's so funny. Like, I, I kind of like it, but in music, I kind of like don't really know what the plan is most of the time like it's kind of like management and stuff where i'm just like i just do the music and play guitar and write and make things and i'm just they'll be like hey this is what we're gonna do they'll be like okay you know what i mean that's kind of how it is hey you're going to tour okay <laughs> hey you need some like, give me some demos okay <laughs> like yeah that's kind of how it is I seen John five a couple of years ago and he said and it makes sense now you know i've been doing this for years but what he said makes a whole lot of sense and i understand why bands are doing this now his son actually got on youtube or something and was, was showing john like all of these bands that are getting these huge reviews just on singles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so john five was like i'll release a single every month that is that is a way of doing it too and we we actually used to try to kind of do that you know until basically you just do that until it picks up and again like you know when you're john five like you know you're pretty big you know so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can you can just drop a single and be like you know people are gonna like oh shit john five put it out like it's not <laughs> we're not to that point yet where people are like oh my god but we're, we're getting there where people are getting excited about moon fever so that's pretty cool but you know that's the thing with with social media youtube all these uh, algorithms and stuff man i feel like if you did something like that hey you're gonna get more traction because that's what people wants to see they want to see what you're putting out like instead of like every three or four years you know what i mean it's like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah definitely yeah um yeah it's, it's cool um i think like the main thing with it is like you just have to come across as authentic you know as long as it's authentic it's it's all good you know any song so far that's pushed the band to their limit as far as like collaborating or just hitting a roadblock and have to recharge and then revisit it possibly. Have you guys had that moment yet with any? Oh yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. You have it all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you have, you have it all the time. Like sometimes they just work. Like we were working through demos with Dave and we, I, I'm sure I can say this, but 
we're working on them with, with Dave and we're like sent and our management wanted them. And I sent them I'm like, what do you guys think? And they're like, we don't like them. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. back to the drawing board. You know what I mean? But I mean, we're songwriters and we write. So it's like, you know, whatever. It's like, you can't, you can't get too like butthurt about it, you know? And sometimes you get stuck, like you're saying, you get stuck in like, a, like what's to the chorus be or a chord change. And you're just like, I just got to drop it, come back to it or just write another song. Typically it's like, if I feel like there's a problem in a song and it's not feeling right, I just get rid of it and go right to something else. You know, like no attachment. Do you feel Moon Fever's music has to come out strong? It, it, there, there cannot be any uh, lag to it. It's got to come out swinging. Has to be. Yeah, absolutely. If it's not the best that we can do, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Straight up. Is the track listing placement important for your upcoming album or EP release? Yeah, there is. I mean, I, especially with our set list, um, you know, I think we have a couple different set lists that we use. And um, I, typically for me, it's four out the gate, just swinging, you know, and then you kind of bring them down a little bit, maybe put a little interlude or something in there to kind of transition it and then right back to the top of the top at the end. That's kind of the the standard issue um, move. <laughs> so is it harder now to, to do a set list or no? Um, no, I mean, um, we we typically will use a certain set list for a tour and then kind of like relook look at it and be like, what didn't work? What worked really well? Like, you know, and we kind of like a, just kind of adjust it to basically just adjust it until you can give the fans the best show you can give them, you know? Sure, yeah. Would you say it's more difficult for an upcoming band to get that opportunity like you guys just had to make it now versus say like 20 years ago? Do you, or do you think it's easier now? Uh, I think, I mean, I think it's, I think honestly, it's always been really hard. I think the music business uh, has, and being successful in music has been always very hard. And it, it's supposed to be, you know what I mean? If this was easy, like, why would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? For sure. For it's sure. supposed to be. It's supposed to challenge you, you know, and that's inspiring to me. Is there anything different on your upcoming EP or album release that's different than what people are accustomed to hearing from Moon Fever? Yeah, I think um, some of these new, there's this new one that Dave actually came up with, um, uh, his original idea, and we kind of developed it in the studio. But man, it's, I think it's really incredible. Um, I must say it's more gloomy, maybe. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's Moon Fever is a high energy rock band that can also bring you some grit and grime from the depths of Seattle, you know? What does each of you, Mitch, bring to this band that makes the chemistry just work? You know, I was, uh, answered this in a different interview one time, and I think it kind of, it comes with like the first time we got together. Tristan came in, he had a bunch of lyrics written, and it was just like instantly, it was like, boom, that's it. It was just like a vortex, like a magic, like straight magic. It felt really wild. It was, um, you can just tell it was something very real and that it just, it is what it's supposed to be. So with this band, what's the growth musically you've seen from yourselves that just impresses you the most, man. What is it from each of you that's gotten better possibly as an artist? I, I think we've all really, the main thing I think we've all really developed is our, our stagecraft, you know, just like being more animated on stage, bringing more of a show, you know, to the, to the people. Um, and I think we're always like developing musically, like just the other two days ago, I was working on a Marcus King solo, which that dude is an incredible guitar player. And, um, you know, you just, I think you always kind of have to challenge yourself, you know? Yeah. You got to keep pushing yourself outside that box because once you stop, man, you might as well just quit. You know, it's yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like what's the point, dude? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to throw moon fever out the window for a couple of questions here, because I want to know specifically about Mitch. We're going to get to know you for just a little bit. Here. Oh, okay. All right. Let's, let's get personal about it. <laughs> Man, it's like I'm on a dating game or something. Yeah. <laughs> if you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? That would be probably the first album that actually got me into wanting to do music for the rest of my life, which is Exile of Main Street by the Rolling Stones. Wow, that was a quick answer. Usually it takes five to ten minutes. That's 
boom, spot on. Oh like, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean that, that album is really what turned me on into my musical journey. You know, it, I owe that thing a lot. So are you shocked that they're still playing at the age of freaking 80? No, I hope I get to do that. Like that's <laughs> sick. I want I want I mean also like Keith Richards is kind of the coolest guitar player of all times. But um yeah, uh, I've I've seen them. I saw them one time with my brother in um Anaheim with Bobby Keys before he died and they were incredible. I mean, that was probably like 10 years ago maybe, but they were still insane live. But here's the thing though, man. It, and I could be wrong in this, but I don't think so. And if I am, folks, sorry. I don't know everything. I know a lot about it. <laughs> I don't know everything. But that band's not had a whole lot of band members come and go. True. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, they have been. I mean, they you know, obviously Charlie Watts died, but like sure. they've basically sure. been that same group since like what the uh, late seventies. Since the dawn of time. <laughs> yeah, since the dawn of time, dude. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's. That's a big trick, and sometimes things happen, and people get replaced, and you know it's it's also a part of it. You know it's uh, it's hard. Some people, some people are like, my girlfriend hates me, and I need to get a real job. You know, like that has <laughs> happened to me and other bands so far. Um, but uh, for the most part, yeah, if it's the same group of guys and you can hang in there, it's it it makes it special for sure. And folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, their new album is a banger. Yeah, it's a it's a smash. It is absolutely unbelievable. And I'm going 80 years old. Yeah, I was Technology. listening to it literally last night, being like, "This is so good." It's a heater. Yeah, I'm not saying anything bad about the band at all, but I mean, technology does play a whole lot into this. But I'm telling you, they can still kick ass. Oh, like, yeah, they absolutely can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's been your most memorable show that the band has been a part of that you still can't believe that it's happened? Or is it going to be the Steel Panther tour? Um, it's definitely going to be Steel Panther. But um, <laughs> I would say probably the craziest thing expect for, for the band was our fourth show we literally did was this radio thing in Las Vegas where we opened for Godsmack in front of like 40,000 people. After our, it was our fourth show, so and none of us really even knew each other. It was a very huge, like test by fire type thing. It's crazy. I'm sure you yeah. were shaken. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, at first I was like, whatever, dude. Like, whatever. Like, I don't <laughs> care. Like, like being like all like whatever. And like, and then I remember I like walked out onto the, like looked at the stage. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, this is a huge show. It was massive. So did you have that that that, that point where you said, I'm not doing this? Hell no. Well, I was nervous, but like my producer was there and Jim there, my family flew out for it. It's one of those things I'm like, I, I gotta do this. So like whatever. I'm like, if we fuck up, like we fuck up, but um, you know. But um, yeah, it was it's pretty cool. It was a cool moment, definitely a very cool moment. I probably know the answer to this, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. Sure. <laughs> If you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, which band would it be and what show would it be? Ooh, man, that's that's a good one right there. Oh, man. Um, there's a cool story in Seattle um, about the Ramones playing the Ritz-Carlton in their ballroom, and they like basically just destroyed the entire place. So maybe that show would be probably pretty crazy. Um, the thought of being in the Ramones in a Ritz Carlton in like the eighties in Seattle sounds like very wild to me and very fun. I was waiting to hear Rolling Stones again because oh, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I wouldn't mind being a Rolling Stone. <laughs> when are we going to see something from you guys? Possibly when when we see anything drop as far as EP full length. Possibly. You know, I, I would expect for sure there to be an EP at some point in time next year. I, I would expect that. Who knows? Maybe a record. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, I'm just like right now we're just kind of like doing our thing with getting loud and kind of riding that wave as long as I can possibly ride it. And then, uh, you know, then we go and put the next thing out. All right, folks, you want to get out and check out Moon Fever and pick up this new single entitled Getting Loud. They have some other singles out that are out there as well, and uh, you definitely want to do that. So, Mitch, how could folks stay in touch with Moon Fever? 
buy this single, everything under the sun for you guys. And plus this upcoming tour with Steel Panther, man. How can he do all that? You can go to our social media, uh, any of the social medias, and type in uh, Moon Fever Official. That's our handle. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, we're on all the platforms, you know, just type in Moon Fever. You'll get all of your up to date Mooney energy or whatever. <laughs> Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up. You only hear these interviews right here on Bods Mayhem Hour. Please get out, check out our Facebook page. There's a podcast link and our awesome YouTube link that you want to go subscribe to if you like what I'm doing. And I hope you guys and gals do because I have some tremendous interviews on there. Don't take my word for it. I like that little pump right there. See, don't take my word for it. Remember that from Reading Rainbow, folks? I do. <laughs> also, get out and check out Moon Fever. Grab this single, Getting Loud. They're going to be on tour with Steel Panther and, uh, Man, that's you. So congratulations again on that. And Mitch, I wish you I wish you guys nothing. But the best of luck, my friend. Thanks so much, dude. Thanks for having me. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.